How are you guys doing today? I'm Nini FC, this is Blue Lines TV, and welcome to another new daily video. Now, in today's video, I will be talking about the latest on Eden Hazard. I'll be talking about the latest on Bakayoko, disappointing news surrounding Reese James, and I'll be talking about Maurizio Sarri as well. Before I get into anything though, today's video is brought to you by the One Football app. So if you guys want to download the best football companion app to have on the market, it will be in the link in the description below. But I want to get straight into things now. Starting with the first big major story today. Yes, you guys, it's over. Eden Hazard isn't going to be playing for us anymore. He will be signing for Real Madrid. Late last night, the club did come out to confirm, to actually confirm that, yes, they have found an agreement now, Hazard will be moving and the club did release a mini statement as well and in the mini statement they spoke about the sadness they're going to have to see Eden Hazard go, just how monumental of a player he was for us and they'll be talking about how they needed to respect Hazard's decision to want to have a new challenge right now. You know, he wanted to go to Real Madrid not just for personal reasons, not just because he's always dreamed to play for them since he was a kid, but for footballing reasons as well. I will be talking about that later on in today's video, but if you guys don't understand the news surrounding the actual details in regards to the transfer, I've spoken about it in the previous video. Quick recap, we are going to be receiving 88 million up front for Eden Hazard, and then there will be bonuses of about 42 million euros on top of that. So the final value of the transfer will be around 140 to 146 million euros. So fantastic business by Marina to command this type of money for playing the final year of his contract. You know, Real Madrid could have been like, you know what, we don't want to sign you now. We're more than happy to wait for you for one more season because we know we can sign you for absolutely nothing. That didn't end up being the case. Hazard will be signing a new five-year deal at Real Madrid, as well as effectively doubling his current wages at Real Madrid. Now, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. Now, that shouldn't be too much of a surprise. I have told you guys before that the club were planning on doubling Hazard's wages here already, so that's not really news. But now the logistics are out of the way, it's where the emotions come into play now. Now, Hazard did come out and he did release a very, very respectful, heartwarming final farewell statement. It was a very long one. I will be linking it in the description below. Hazard did release this on Facebook. So if you guys want to find it yourself, and I'm sure you're following Eden Hazard on Facebook already. I mean, by now, I'm sure most of you have seen this already. But Hazard spoke about the time he's had here. He spoke about the memories he's made. He spoke about the bond between the teammates the relationship with people behind the scenes as well. He spoke about how, you know, it's been a dream to always play for Real Madrid. And, you know, he wanted to really emphasize that he's not signing for Real Madrid other than fulfilling a childhood ambition. And I think you can respect that. And Hazard's message is very empowering in that sense. You know, he said that it was his dream to always play for Real Madrid. And he spoke about how everyone has the right to fight for their dream and make their dream happen. But Hazard did talk about the fact that he achieved two dreams. One is to play for Real Madrid and the other one was playing for us. And Hazard, you know, we can't be mad with the guy. We really can't. We have to really respect everything he's done for us. He said that one day he would like to come back and, you know, have a drink, have a beer and reminisce about all the good old days. Reminisce about the times against Liverpool, against Man City. That curling effort against Spurs as well. How can we forget that? There have been so many classic Eden Hazard moments and now that it's official and it's confirmed, he won't be playing for us anymore. I can't lie, it does feel very surreal. And if anything, you know, if you're a fan, it should really like wake you up in regards to the realities of football. You know, we're so invested in the game as fans. But now Hazard is effectively going to be a memory. That's all he's going to be now. Eden Hazard is going to be someone that we look at on YouTube. Now, we look at our, you know, previous games he played in. We won't be seeing him playing for us anymore. And it, and it feels weird because for a lot of us, we've seen Eden Hazard being the face of the club in that sense. We have that joke between us that he's called Hazard FC. But it's been for a very good reason because literally anything good we do comes straight from Eden Hazard. And for me, I feel as if he needed to move on to fulfill his sporting ambition. You know, Hazard wants to win a Ballon d'Or. He wants to win a Champions League. He wants to be consistently competing 
for trophies and tournaments every single year. And during his time at Chelsea, where, you know, he spoke about the hard times that's happened at the club. And there have been many hard times since we've signed Eden Hazard. And I just feel like we never got the full potential from Eden Hazard. What was the plan once we signed Eden Hazard? Was the plan to make him become the new Ronaldo or Messi? I don't think it was because not once did we bring in the right personnel to make that dream happen. Hazard's played a big part in a lot of our lives over the past few years. It's going to be sad, it's going to feel weird to see him play for another team, but this is football. This is what it's about. And if there's one thing that we do want to take away from Hazard's departure, that's the fact that, you know what, enjoy the moments. Enjoy the moments. That, that's what it comes down to. That's what Hazard's base his footballing philosophy on. He's ignored all the bullshit happening behind the scenes. You know, he doesn't get involved in all that stuff. He doesn't even let the managers and their tactical decisions influence how Hazard plays the game because Hazard never played football for fame. He played football purely for the love of the sport. And I know that that's been one thing that's been used against him so often. People have told him to lose that mentality, you know, become a robot in that sense, become a Ronaldo, a robot that is purely built on being extremely efficient and playing as efficiently as possible. But that's not why we fell in love with football in the first place. We didn't. We fell in love with football for the moments, for the spectacle, for the skill, for the emotion. And that's one thing that Eden Hazard gave all of us over the past seven years. So Eden Hazard, thank you very much for these past seven years. It's been a blessing. And obviously I hope that you find more success and new success at Real Madrid. And you can bet your bottom dollar that I will be watching you next season. But you guys, I literally could go on about this forever. I've got a lot of Eden Hazard videos planned. So expect to see that coming in the next few days. Anyway, moving on to the second story. And in that sense, I wanted to get all the sad news out of the way. And that's in regards to Reese James. Now, last night, representing England on the 20s, he sustained an ankle break. Yes, it means that he will be out for between three to four months. And for a guy that's performed so amazingly for Wigan, one of the best players in the championship, one of our most promising players, a guy that's just been finding new heights and just been increasing his profile every single day. To get an injury like this, an injury that's going to stop him having a pre-season. He won't have one. We won't see him back until sometime in September. And that's if everything goes to plan with his rehabilitation and his development again. But when he does come back, he will be effectively starting at zero. And we won't be seeing him, I'm guessing, until maybe late September or sometime in October or November. Or who knows, you know, knowing us, knowing that he's a young player. I'm sure that we'll find a pressure-free game like an FA Cup game against a lower league opposition or, you know, maybe in a Carabao Cup. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. But it's sad. It really is sad that all the momentum's died now. It's died. We're going to have to wait for him. Hopefully, Reese James comes back even fitter, even stronger. But it just continues the bad news, you know? hudson Adoy out. Ruben out probably our three best young players we possess right now. And for me, it does make even more sense now why the club decided to appeal to Kaz in the end. I feel to make this a separate video, maybe tomorrow. The quality in the team is reduced now. It's not the same. Now that Hazard's gone, no Reese, no Ruben, no hudson Adoy, And I feel like these are three players, three key players that will be playing first team football next season. Let's hope that they all come back pretty soon. The only positive thing is, is that once these guys do get back to fitness, they will be coming back around the same time, which is a positive. So it's really going to feel like the addition of three new signings when these guys do come back. But Reese, just focus on your redevelopment, focus on getting better. But until then, all we can hope for is that Reese does come back fitter and stronger. Yeah, it's very cliched, but what else can we hope for? Anyway, Moving on to the third story, and that's in regards to Sari. And yes, news late last night as well, but it looks like Sari's agent, Fali Ramadani, came to a conclusion with the club late last night. They did agree terms, and it's looking like Juventus won't be paying anything for Sari. We do know that Juventus do want to waiver the rest of the money that we need to pay them for Higuain 
it makes a lot of sense and for me i always kind of had a feeling like the deal was going to end like this now it does make sense we understand that with our club and our boards we constantly like to save face every single time and you know you can't be selling your best player in eden hazard and then announcing that you're letting your manager leave for free it makes the club look weak and you have to understand that the image of the club is very important it's the exact same image that helps you attract players attract personnel or or different people to come and work for the club depending on any capacity or role but sorry we'll be signing for juventus and good luck to him and i think that he's going to need a lot of luck now I do feel like fate hasn't really dealt too kindly with Sari. Now, I kind of do sympathise a tiny bit because, you know, I understand the struggles he came through. I understand the nature of football as well. If you're going to leave us and the event has come for you, can you really afford to turn them down? Now, yes, all this talks of betrayal towards Napoli and the fans and the players, but what else can he do? Now, there's an argument that Sari should have been comfortable staying with us, working alongside us, especially now that we want to introduce a lot more young players to the team. And for me, and it's been a theory which I've been speaking about for a while now, but I've always felt like Sari now cares more about himself. He cares more about wanting to achieve more. He understands that he won't be around for too long. I mean, he's in his early 60s. I'm guessing that he'll be around for the next few years, maybe 10 years max. After that, it's retirement. And for a guy that sacrificed so much of his life to football, I understand now why he does want to win. He is ready for a new stage in his career. It seems like obviously our ambitions and his ambitions just didn't meet in the end because for Sari, it would be like going back to step one again. And I think he's tired of that now. And I think that his move to Juventus is personally good for his career because he's inheriting an amazing squad. I feel for him. But Sari understands that, you know, sometimes the big decision isn't going to be the popular one. Now, what do the Napoli fans, what do the Napoli players really expect him to do to sacrifice his career? For what? For sentimentality? And where does that get you? I mean, did Napoli win anything after all the work and dedication? No, the players got very close, very, very close, but they failed at the final hurdle. But that's life, that's football, you know, as Sari said, respect the memories, respect the emotion, but we have to separate that when it comes to a career. I don't personally feel like the takes from the Napoli players have been very respectful. Zielinski, for example, you should be very happy that Sari brought you from Empoli, improved you as a player, and really made you the guy you are today. I, I feel like it's very selfish in that sense to want everything from the manager, but to give nothing back. That's my take on it, but listen, I have no qualms with Sari. Maybe I'm a bit disappointed that he didn't want to stay, but I think that, you know, we have to respect people's decisions at times. And I definitely feel like if you look at Sari's entire career, for me, I think he deserves to have his moment now. And to end on the final story for today, that's in regards to Bakayoko and his rep, Abdu, who happens to be his brother as well, came out to state that Bakayoko was focused on having a preseason with us and coming back to the club. Now, for all of you, this really shouldn't be a surprise. I've spoken about this story so many times. When it's come to Bakayoko, it always came down to Milan. It was going to come down to whether Milan secured Champions League football, which they didn't do. Gattuso isn't there now. Bakayoko is already quite disillusioned with life in Italy right now. The racist treatment, not getting much protection from the footballing bodies as well. And who knows what's happening in his personal life on top of that. But Milan were always going to have to sell players to try and finance a deal to keep him. Maybe Bakayoko's thinking, you know what, don't even waste your time with that. Don't worry. It's been a very good year. He helped me get my footballing mojo back. I feel much more confident now. And I feel like I'm in a position in my life now where I can come back to Chelsea and really show them what I'm about. Now, for me, when it comes to Bakayoko coming, ideally, I prefer to sell to generate income. We have to understand that with the transfer ban, we have to understand with a lot of players being injured right now, we know that cover hasn't been finalised right now. There could be an argument that maybe Bakayoko should get another season so we can really reassess him. It's going to come down to Baka though. I think that if he comes back for pre-season, he has to be on point. Let's see how far he's come. Let's see how far he's grown. I'll give him an opportunity to, you know, have that preseason. 
and hopefully he'll play with even more confidence and then we can really reassess the player afterwards. But you guys, in the comment section below, give me your thoughts and opinions. Would you keep back Yoko? Let me know. And on that note, that ends today's video. Please like, comment and subscribe. And just one more final thing for you all. In the comment section below, write down your fondest, most memorable Eden Hazard memory. Anyway, you guys, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm Nini FC. This is Reliance CV. Signing out.